puzzles in the elementary math classroom. That's what today's video is going to be about. I'm Dr. Gordon Hamilton. I'm the director of Math Pickle. I love to see puzzles in the classroom. The question is, which puzzles are good puzzles to include and which ones should be skipped? The idea here is that you have to take that puzzle and you have to take it apart. How are you going to do it? Well, you can start with the little yellow piece here. Is that a puzzle that you would like to have in your kindergarten or grade one classroom? Aesthetically, it looks nice, but it takes a long time to put back together, probably about a minute. Now, that's a long time if you've got 20 students all working on different puzzles. So I don't recommend this puzzle for your kindergarten or grade one classroom. Let's get rid of it. Another puzzle that looks really good is this one down here. This is by Caden Enterprises and it's a teddy bear bonanza. I love this puzzle. It's made robustly but very expensive. It's $85. So this is only for schools that have a lot of money to spend. What we want is cost-effective, for the most part, we want cost-effective puzzles. Here's one from ThinkFun. Here we've got five uh, sets of bricks. Here's one, two, so you've got five of these shapes and you have to snap those together in order to make different patterns. So here's the pattern that I'm going to make right now. And how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to do this and this, that and that. Now you should not be cheering at this point because of course this is rigged. Of course I've done this before. Um, it would take me a lot longer if I hadn't seen this. <laughs> so uh, I'm cheating here. This is a great uh, bunch of cards. It's cost effective, not only because the game is reasonably priced, but because you get 60 different challenges. This is going to entertain your kids for a lot longer than the single puzzle that we just saw. The next puzzle, also from Think Fun, really one of the great companies in puzzles. This, this one is called Hotspot. This has been discontinued, sadly, but you can still pick up a copy from, um, from eBay. So here we go. Here we have these little ghosts. And the idea is that you have to uh, get this ghost to the hotspot. How are you going to do it? You have to jump. Every move that you make has to jump. So um, that's my setup. You can just confirm this is a, a beginner problem. First, I'm going to jump here. Then I'm going to jump here. Then I'm going to do a double jump. And hey presto, I've solved this problem. Again, you should not be impressed. <laughs> um, this is, of course, rigged. This whole video is rigged. But we have to recognize the quality of these Think Fun puzzles. They are fantastic. They bring a lot of joy and engagement to any math class that, that brings them in. This is a classic that you're seeing here. This is uh, a game called uh, Rush Hour. Equally impressive is this game, Tip Over. Uh, here you can get it in a Spider-Man theme as well. Think Fun's not the only fantastic game producer out there. I also really like Smart Games. They do awesome puzzles. Again, uh, very suitable for your classroom. I'm going to be doing a full video on Smart Games and Think Fun just because they deserve it. Of course, you don't have to spend any money to come up with a quality little puzzle. Just with scraps laying around your schoolroom, you can come up with this quality little puzzle. These are lily pads. These are frogs. Each turn, 
you look at a lily pad and all the frogs that are on that lily pad get the jump. One frog jumps one. Two frogs jump two, three, jo th three frogs jump three. You get the idea. So one frog jumps one. Hmm. Two frogs jump two, so I could come over here. You always have to go to a, a lily pad that's already occupied with a frog, so I can't jump one, two over to here. That's not acceptable. But here you can see that I've got three frogs on here. One, two, three. Yippee! The frogs have been successful. They have managed to get together and party on the same lily pad. Whenever students solve this, I just walk up, add another lily pad, add another frog, and walk away. No explanation. Let them figure out that probably what they're expected to do is to try to solve the puzzle afresh. There's bound to be compromise here. We want our puzzles to look good. We want them to be cost effective. We want them to be easy to put away and easy to take out. We want them to have few pieces so that we don't lose them. Another property that I want to add to this already, we have to juggle the, all of these things that we want. Another property that I really like is to have a framework provided that students can come up with their own puzzles to give you and to give their peers. A really good example of this is the grade three million dollar problem. You'll find this on the www.mathpickle.com website. Another puzzle that gives students the framework to create their own puzzles is Mimitsu. Mimitsu is the Japanese word for earthworm. That's why you have an earthworm crawling across your screen right now. Mimitsu gives students practice in prime and composite numbers. You'll find it on mathpickle.com under the grade 6 section. I've reached the end of this celebration of puzzles without describing why they actually deserve to be in the mathematics classroom. And that's because at the core of a quality mathematics education is problem solving. 